In this design example, we're going to de determine de the distributed load required to form a mechanism in the fixed fixed beam shown. In this problem, we're going to assume that we have an elastic plastic material. So we'll get a moment up until MP and then the section will hold MP until uh, failure or formation of the mechanism. The first step is going to be to apply the load to the structure until we have the formation of a hinge. So in this beam, we're going to apply a load W1 to our structure, which will cause uh, WL squared over 12 at the ends and W1L squared over 24 at the midspan. So we're going to apply the load until we reach a plastic moment at the ends of the member. At this point, we'll have our plastic moment capacity equal to W1L squared over 12, which we can then solve for W1, which will be equal to 12 MP over L squared. So this is the load required uh, to cause hinging at the ends of the member. We'll next draw our new structure um, with our hinges at the ends and apply an additional load until the second hinge forms. So our fixed fixed beam with hinges at the end is just a simply supported beam. And we'll then apply an additional distributed load, W2, until we have formation of a second hinge. So now we want to, want to apply an additional load, W2, until we form a hinge at the middle of our, sec or a middle of our beam. Uh, so we need to remember that we have a moment already on our beam from our load W1. So any additional moment caused by W2 will be in addition to the moment that's already on the beam from W1. So we'll have our W1 L squared over 24 plus W2 L squared over 8 is equal to MP. Now we can also remember that our MP is equal to W1 L squared over 12 uh, from hinging at the ends. So we'll plug in this value into our first term to get 0.5 MP plus W2 L squared over 8 is equal to MP. And then we can solve for W2. And we'll find that our W2 is equal to 4 MP over L squared. So this is the additional load required to cause hinging at mid-span of our simply supported beam. We can then repeat step two until our structure is kinematically unstable. So now we have our fixed fixed structure with hinges at the ends from step one and hinge in the middle from step two. So we can see that our structure now is kinematically unstable. So we know that we've reached our mechanism. So our mechanism's formed, so now we can find our total collapse load is the summation of all of our other loads that we found. So we know then our total collapse load is our W1, which is 12 MP over L squared, plus our W2, which is 4 MP over L squared, which will give us 16 MP 
over L squared. So this is our um, total load that's required to cause collapse of the fixed fixed beam.